When it came time to choose a front suspension system for the Boss 302.0, we looked around and we weren't really satisfied with a lot of the suspension systems that are on the market for Mustang. Uh, most of them are based on the Mustang 2 suspension, which really isn't designed for high performance driving. But fortunately, Detroit Speed and Engineering has just released their Aluma frame system for the Mustang. Detroit Speed has been making track-ready suspension systems for GM cars for years, but now it's finally time for the Ford guys to play. The Aluma frame system has got similar components to what Detroit Speed already does for GM cars. Uh, they start with the Corvette spindle, so the tie rod ends and ball joints are all readily available products off of what's already a high-performance car and then they work inward from there. They custom design their own tubular control arms. They work with JRI to tune shocks for the coil over specifically for these cars. And then they have their own special tuned steering rack. So everything is designed to reduce bump steer and have proper geometry when you're really putting a car hard in the corners on a racetrack. It still retains the design characteristics of a car that you can drive every day and not feel like it's miserable to drive. Since the aluminum frame is obviously aluminum, you can't just weld it to the car. So there's some special steps, which are the most difficult steps, to installing the aluminum frame into the Mustang. First thing you do is you hang the aluminum frame from the car with two existing bolt holes from the original sway bar mount. So now that we've got this hung up here to the uh, original cross member bolts, what we gotta do is square it up, make sure it's in the right place, and then we mark where it's located, and we're gonna mark the eight holes that we have to drill into the original frame and then follow the specific instructions on how to drill those holes so that this thing is rigidly mounted to the bottom of the car. These eight holes are for what Detroit Speed calls crush sleeves. They're these solid metal machine sleeves that will go in the holes from the bottom of the frame rail and then all the way through the top. On the top side of the frame rail, you then put this machined plate that reinforces the frame rail and gives these crush sleeves a place to anchor. Drilling the holes through the bottom of the frame rail is a bit of a challenge because of the curved shape of the frame. Uh, you can't simply put a drill bit through the Luma frame because it's aluminum and you'll tear it up. The other challenge is getting a drill bit to start straight through an angled surface. So what we did was we carefully marked the holes. When you're marking the holes in the bottom of the frame rail, we want to take your time because if you screw up now, your holes won't be in the right spot and you'll spend a lot more time and probably not have as nice looking weld around these crush sleeves once they're actually installed in the car. The other challenge is getting the drill bit just to start in the curved surface because you gotta drill straight up. So what we did is we started with a very small drill bit, an eighth inch, and we worked our way up to a hole cutter. This allowed us to keep the drill bit straight and cut the hole at the correct shape so that when the crush sleeve is threaded in, it has a nice gap around it for a proper weld. After you've gotten through the bottom of the frame rail, you have to transfer those holes to the top of the frame rail so that the crush sleeves can go all the way through and thread into the reinforcement plate. This is another place you really want to take some time because if you don't get this right, you're going to have to file the holes and do a lot of fitting, which isn't any fun and again makes it more difficult to weld these pieces in properly. Once you've got all the holes drilled in the frame rail for the crush sleeves, it's time to test fit the Aluma frame to make sure that you got all the holes in the right places. Because if you didn't and you welded this stuff together, then the aluminum frame is not going to fit. So now is the time to make any minor adjustments that you need to make. Once you're there, you final weld the crush sleeves and the reinforcement plates to the car so that everything stays rigid. Once you've got the reinforcement plates and crush sleeves welded to the car, bolt the Aluma frame to the car. The next thing to do was to test fit the brackets for the jump stops. Uh, something we ran into here is that there's a pinch weld where the two pieces of frame rail come together, and this interfered with the urethane portion of the jump stop. John took the time to measure and mark an area so that he could cut a notch into the pinch weld so that the urethane would fit correctly. Once he had that notch properly made, he ground the paint away and applied some weld through primer so that he could final weld the bracket to the frame. After that, you install the shock towers. 
After that, you can install the control arms, keeping in mind to torque all these bolts as you go. Uh, the Illumina frame uses Detroit Speed's new speed line system, uh, which is a system that makes a line car much easier than it used to be. Usually you kind of have uh, shims and turnbuckles to make adjustments in a car, and that's not a really perfect science. The speed line system has a chart in the instruction manual that denotes what each number on these little star-shaped washers actually means in relation to an adjustment. So when you put your car on the alignment rack, and it's off by, say, a degree in caster, you go to this chart and you say you want to move the caster up a degree. You just simply turn the star to the right number and you're done. You don't have to put shims in, tighten it down, and check it again. The most difficult part of actually bolting the suspension components to the car is setting up the sway bar. Uh, since it's a spline system, it's difficult to get the arms on the splines at the same place. So what we like to do is set the splines on the bench and mark where the arm should be so they're both in the same spot. That way, once you've installed the sway bar and hammered the bushings in, it's easy to tell which spline you should put the sway bar arms onto. Uh, next, I assembled the coilover shocks on the bench uh, by slipping the retainer down, sliding the spring over it, putting the retainer back on, and screwing the adjuster up until the spring made contact with the retainer. These coilover shocks install into the upper mounts on the Illuma frame and then into the lower control arms. Once you've got the control arms hung on the car, you can install the spindles and torque the ball joints. Uh, the Detroit Speed Illuma frame system uses uh, sixth generation Corvette spindles because everybody knows a Corvette handles well straight from the factory. After you've got the spindles installed, you can install the Detroit Tune power steering rack. The Detroit Speed Tune steering rack comes pre-assembled and ready to bolt on the car. They've already done the hard part of pressing the urethane bushings in for you. Uh, you simply hold it up to the Illuma frame and install the through bolts and torque them to specification. Once you're there, you can thread the Corvette tie rod ends on and rough guess your toe until you've got the car fully assembled and ready to go to the alignment shop. Now that the Illuma frame has been installed on the front of the Boss 302.0, the next process will be installing the new Detroit Speed and Engineering Quadrilink on the rear of the car.